Hello, welcome back. I'm Jeff Kelly uh, from Wikibon. We're here inside the Cube live at Cassandra Summit. Um, my co-host John Furrier uh, is just stepped out for a little bit, and I'll be uh, hosting uh, Nabi Akia, Executive VP of Marketing from Actuate. Uh, we're here to talk a little bit about what Actuate is doing in the Cassandra community and, and kind of how you guys play there. Actuate, if you're not familiar with, is kind of the company behind BERT, uh, the open source BI and reporting tool uh, community. Um, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, it's nice to be here. Thanks very much, appreciate Great. the time. So why don't we just start off with a little bit of, a little bit of background for our, for our audience. Um, kind of act, uh, tell us a little bit about Actuate and how you got involved in the, kind of how the, the big data world kind of intersects with, what, with the BI world that you play in. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you, you know, Actuate, I think from the very founding uh, back in 93, has really been about taking lots of data that's available throughout the organization, now obviously increasingly even outside of the organization, mm -hmm. and getting it to lots of people. And that's kind of been the founding uh, you know, vision of Actuate from the very beginning. And we really haven't strayed for that. Of course, I think what's changed is the definition of what we mean by lots of information and lots of data, and what we mean by you know, getting information to lots of people. Now, th those are obviously constantly evolving. And, uh, you know, and obviously, when you talk about lots of data, uh, you know, clearly the big data movement, and, and particularly you know, projects like Cassandra and uh, partners like DataStacks are going to become increasingly important, because that's where you know, I think more and more data and other kind of information is headed into in terms of that. And, and what we're obviously looking to do is to help our customers take all that data and make sure that they're able to present it, analyze it, you know, discover things from it, uh, you know, so that they can make the most of that information mm -hmm. in that, uh, in, in things like Cassandra. Right, so yeah, some of the NoSQL databases, Cassandra being one I think that's, you know, really known for uh, supporting big data, real-time applications, transactional applications, but not necessarily known for uh, the ability to report and do analytics against that data. Right. Um, so that's where actually it comes in. Yeah. Um, and, and tell me about the fit uh, from a technology perspective uh, in terms of actually reporting against volumes of data that we're talking about now uh, with, with Cassandra and other NoSQL stores, um, and how that affects your ability to report, or, or does it change you know, some of the metrics you have to look at or the way you look at data? Um, how does that impact what you do? Well, yeah, I think, I think, I think you brought up a lot of points in that, uh, in that question. I think that the things that, uh, and I think we have an advantage, uh, I think, com uh, in, in contrast to some of our competitors on a more the traditional BI is that, uh, you know, I think our philosophy all the way along has been to go after lots of different data sources. Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, you know, uh, the traditional BI model obviously relies heavily on a data warehouse, and right. we've never done that from the very beginning. We, we, we can go after, we've always gone after things like transactional systems and so on. So we're very well equipped to kind of handle the volume and clearly the variety and the velocity of the data. And, and, and you're right, th I, th I think some of the things that Cassandra brings that's very exciting to us is some of the, uh, the high scale, the real time nature of the, the be able to kind of uh, process that data. Uh, and you know what we're looking to do is obviously then turn that data into compelling visualizations and, and analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's what Bert brings to the party. And obviously that's the other aspect of I think what, what we're excited about is that you know even though we started out as a uh, kind of very traditional enterprise software company, you know back in 2004 we initiated an open source project called Bert with the Eclipse Foundation. And I think that's, you know, that heritage of, I think, starting from open source, I think makes us a very good fit. Because again, Cassandra, Bert, I think will be a very good fit kind of even at the open source level. And then I think both Datastax and Actuate is going to have very, I think, compelling uh, offerings kind of on top of the, uh, the open source stack, if you will, mm -hmm. to kind of uh, provide the, the solutions that customers are mm -hmm. looking for. So let's dig into the, some of the use cases and sure. what you're seeing uh, your customers really using Actuate for on top of Cassandra or DataStacks platform. Uh, what are you know one or two really compelling use cases that you're seeing uh, bubble up to, to the surface? Sure, I think I think there's a uh, uh, you know several of those. I think uh, what the real time aspects and 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 so on of Cassandra is going to allow us to do is to really play to our traditional strength, which is tends to be more of the operational. Uh, you know, dashboards, operational mm -hmm. reports, and so on, because those really do rely on a kind of a low latency model, because you want to make sure that they get the data up front. So, you know, I think as, as things like, uh, uh, you know, uh, unstructured information or even machine generated information comes more and more into play, mm -hmm. you know, we see a lot of kind of applications in that area where, you know, we're able to provide real time. 
alerts to start, but then be able to kind of dig down and really be able to kind of do some compelling analysis and take some you know, significant actions based on that. So we see that as one of the areas. Now, I'll admit, this is still pretty early days, <laughs> so it's not like we have you know, tons of customers using it uh, together, but uh, you know, we are starting to get a, a lot of uh, our large customers asking us about what we're doing in this whole area of big data. And you know, Cassandra is one of the areas that comes up, and in fact, it's, it's uh, uh, you know, to a point, one of the ways that uh, we can connect to Cassandra is actually a community provided connector to okay. Cassandra. You know, along with, uh, we're obviously also supporting uh, you know, uh, HQL and Hector as well, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, I think it just shows that uh, you know, they're, they're, community, they're members of the Burke community that are really anxious to kind of connect Burke to Cassandra mm -hmm. to a point where you know, they're c contributing back to the Burke community mm -hmm. connectors to uh, Cassandra as well. Well, that's interesting, yeah. I mean, if both being open source uh, tools and platforms. Uh, talk a little bit more about the community. We've asked uh, some previous guests today about the, uh, kind of the personality of the Cassandra community. Um, you know, we, we're finding it's really kind of a hard charging, uh, as, as my co-host John Furrier put it, alpha geeks. <laughs> uh, how does that compare and mesh with what the, uh, the open source, the Burke community is, is like? And, and maybe expand a little bit more on some of those connections that you're seeing being built. Yeah, I, and I, I, you know, I think the I, I think profiles for the for a good chunk of it, I think it's pretty similar. Um, you know, obviously, I think these are people who want to get things done, which is why I think it, the open source model is very attractive to them, so they can kind of just download, try things out, make things happen, and and, and go. Uh, you know, I think what the interesting thing I think we're finding with the Burke community, you know, we've been at it since since all four, as I said, and uh, you know, I think the, where it's been good for us commercially is that we really are starting to find a, a core group of developers in the large enterprises that we focus on. Because mm -hmm. like I said, you know, we, we've kind of mixed our open source model with our heritage of uh, enterprise software. And you know, what's really been uh, the driver of our commercial business has really been to find the, these alpha geeks, if you will, <laughs> uh, but in large uh, you know, enterprises that uh, uh, y y are starting to really drive some very significant mm -hmm. uh, projects. So that's our model on the commercialization side is that uh, you know, we, we obviously, first objective was to build a very large community, which we've done, I think, with like a million and a half developers that we can see in, in, on a global basis. And now, but what we've really have focused the commercial is, is really kind of the relatively small percentage of those developers that are building large scale applications for large enterprises. And again, I think that's another area where we're going to fit very well with Cassandra and DataStax, because mm -hmm. I think the characteristics of the data sources those companies need to support, I think, is a good fit for Cassandra and, and DataStax. Mm -hmm. And you know, and DataStax has been a great, uh, I think it's going to be a great partner because obviously Cassandra is central, but they also support the other key Apache projects mm -hmm. that we're excited about, Hadoop and, and Solar. So. Right. Yeah, I wonder, I'd love to get your take, uh, you know, kind of on the evolution of the BI industry, especially as big data has come, come to the fore. It was interesting you mentioned that uh, actually it's heritage, it's kind of not necessarily around that centralized data warehouse model, but right. kind of pulling data from multiple sources. So that puts you in kind of a different position than most of the traditional BI players that are focused on, you know, reporting against a centralized data warehouse. Um, how has the BI industry uh, kind of started to evolve in this big data world? Is, is BI essentially, as we traditionally know it, going to be relevant in a big data world? And you know, what role is it going to play going forward? Is, are we going to see finally, for instance, the, we talk about self-service BI and mm -hmm. the ability for you know, non-technical users to use BI, but we're still not seeing a huge adoption in that sense. So what are some of the implications of big data on BI going forward? Well, I think you know. I, I think one of the key things about the self-service aspect that I think big data is going to play, and particularly something like Cassandra will be a very big fit, is that uh, you know when you require a data warehouse, that's an enormous project in most cases, right? right? You got to, yeah, and, and, and it's a project that it's often gets obsolete fairly quickly, right? Because you got to put a structure in place with a mm -hmm. warehouse. If the, if you need to add new data elements, that's a pretty big project in itself. Whereas I think things like Cassandra's going to allow you to do is to just basically load data without doing a lot of, having to do a lot of pre-processing. Right. And then you, know, you get powerful tools like Bird on top of that that allows you to literally extract, uh, process, analyze, and then visualize the data. I think that's really where the, you know, the, uh, the, the future of uh, BI is headed. You know, we got, I think we, uh, you know, the, one of the big trends in um, BI the last, Three years is where I like, kind of been the, the the data discovery kind of you know where 
you put things in an in-memory uh, database, uh, and then do visualization, mm -hmm. which is fine, but again, th by being in memory, there's some limitations to data size. I, I think if we can now uh, take some of that concept of self-service and visualization, then, but put that effectively on top of uh, something like Cassandra, you know, mm -hmm. then I think it really opens up enormous opportunities, and I think that's where, you know, I think clearly BI, is, I think, is headed in that area. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and obviously, I think that also speaks to some of the, you know, the key visualizations you're going to have to do as well, you know, as well as the, uh, you know, the, of course, the other uh, side of that equation from the data side is obviously the visualization side, and we do see devices like the iPad and tablets become increasingly important mm -hmm. as well. So that's, I think, the other nature mm -hmm. where the, uh, the market is headed. And I think it's going to call on some, uh, it's going to enorm some enormous opportunities. It's a very exciting time, I mm -hmm. think, in the BI market. And, uh, you know, I think we're all kind of jockeying <laughs> for that position, of yeah, course. Yeah, absolutely. But it's, it's also yeah. a challenge, isn't it? I mean, you've got uh, all these different, when you're looking at the big data world, you've got all these different kind of projects popping up, and some are hot <laughs> at this given time, and then there's another, uh, you know, HBase is hot at one point, and then Cassandra, and then yep. uh, Mongo, whatever it might be. How uh, does, a, does a vendor like yourself keep up with everything that's going on and, and manage to stay relevant in, in such an evolving kind of uh, uh, community like that. Um, do you have to pick kind of winners, to try to pick the winners ahead of time, or, or are you able to kind of adapt to the, I don't want to call it the whims of the market, but <laughs> as, the, as the, the, the fortunes of the different projects rise and fall, uh, do you kind of go after it that way? Well, I, th I, think, I think we've been fortunate because of our heritage. So, you know, in fact, uh, you know, we, I, I I've talked about BERT, which is a uh, kind of a business intelligence uh, technology at the Eclipse level. But the other thing we've actually contributed to the Eclipse Foundation is something that we call the Open Data Access Framework. So that allows us a, a fairly uh, effective, efficient way to go after different data sources. And in fact, it's, it's what our community uses to uh, to build the, the Cassandra connector or mm -hmm. other connectors to other things. And I, so I, I think technologically we're in good shape to keep up with that. Uh, but of course the other enormous advantage we have is the community, right? So uh, the community will kind of tell us where to head. You know, and that's the beauty of having a very large active community like we do with BERT. Uh, so we can monitor, we can monitor our forums, we can monitor the questions, we can monitor what technologies those developers are sharing with us. Uh, and you know, and that's also clearly telling us big data is a big and real because you know, a lot of uh, interest and a lot of the development work that our community has contributed has been really in that area, including obviously Cassandra mm -hmm. and other kind of big data, NoSQL, NewSQL data, uh, right. you know, data sources. Mm -hmm. So, uh, last question, tell us a little bit about specifically how you're working with DataStax and kind of what's, what's the state of that partnership uh, at this point? Uh, well, you know, I think uh, uh, we're obviously very excited with the, with the partnership that we announced this morning. And, uh, you know, I think we've started at, at the kind of the basic good uh, kind of technology integration. Uh, but we also do feel like, at least with DataStack, we're going to share a lot of uh, 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 profiles in terms of the kind of customers that mm -hmm. I think is going to be a good fit. I think they're going to tend to be relatively large enterprises that are going to deal with lots of data sources that is going to need the, uh, the speed of delivery and, and, and access. And, uh, and, and in fact, you know, when I look at some of the customers that are presenting here, you know, I think it's going to end up being good. Good. There are many customers that we'd love to go after, and I think what uh, I think DataStax finds with the actual customer base, uh, our large financial institutions, and mm -hmm. so on, I think are going to be good targets. So, you know, we're looking forward to. Uh, I think as one of the, my colleagues at DataStax said, you know, let's go sell some things, and I think that's what <laughs> we're going to. You know, I think we're going to have a good opportunity to kind of uh, do that with. Uh, with our, starting with our mutual customer base, but I think it will also open up uh, through our communities uh, even more opportunities mm -hmm. for us. So we're excited about the partnership with DataStax. Fantastic, all right. Well, good luck to you. Thanks so much, Thank Abby, you. for coming on. You're welcome. Uh, we'll be right back here from uh, live from Cassandra Summit. We'll have uh, we've got a full day of programming ahead. And again, thanks so much for joining us. You're welcome.